Hi guys! I know you've been hearing a whole lot of my voice, but you haven't been seeing my face. Uh, I decided to come outside to do our Ready Freddy book today, and I'm sorry that I missed you yesterday. So we're going to read two chapters today, um, and also we are reading the book Stop That Hamster. And we had a huge surprise in this book that Freddie's mom actually agreed to let him take the class hamster home because she does not allow pets. But my house, we do allow pets. So one of our pets is this guy right here. It's my guy. It's a girl. <laughs> and her name is Karma. And she has very sharp nails and she's not very happy about this right now. But she just wanted to say hi. So, let's go ahead and get started on our two chapters for today. So, we left off on chapter four, which was Harold at home. All right. As soon as we got home, Robbie and I took Harold up to my room. Remember, do not let him out of the cage, my mom yelled up the stairs. We won't. Well, what should we do with him first, I asked Robbie. How about a makeover? I'm sure Susie has some pink nail polish we could use. A makeover? Are you crazy? Robbie burst out laughing. I was just kidding, ding dong. I can't believe you actually thought I was serious. Haha, ha, very funny. Should we build him something out of Legos? Yeah, let's make that castle we were talking about before. Nah, I don't really like that idea. What else can we make? How about a spaceship? We can be space explorers and Harold can fly to a strange planet and meet some aliens. <gasps> Great idea, Robbie. You always have the best ideas. We got to work building a huge spaceship. It took a long time, but we finally finished. Then we put Harold and his cage inside. Look, he fits perfectly. Buckle up, little guy. Get ready for takeoff. Robbie and I did the countdown together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off! Harold traveled through space for a while, and he eventually landed on the planet Greep. There he met a friendly alien named Titu, who gave him a tour of the planet. We played space explorers for a while, but Harold slept through most of the game. I think Harold's bored. Let's take him outside. Maybe he needs some fresh air. Good idea, said Robbie. How about if we have a skateboard contest and Harold can be the judge? We grabbed our skateboards, helmets, and Harold's cage, and we ran down the stairs. We were careful not to swing the cage too much. We didn't want Harold to toss his cookies. Mom, we're going outside to ride our skateboards, I yelled. Where's Harold? He's with us. Do not take him out of that cage, boys, especially outside. We know, we know, we'll be careful. We went out front and put Harold down on the grass. Then we put on our helmets. Hey, Harold, wake up, I called, tapping gently on the cage. Watch what we can do. Robbie and I set up a little ramp, and we did a few wheelies and some jumps, but Harold slept through all of it. Oh, my gosh, the sun is so bright. <laughs> I can't believe how much Harold sleeps, I said. Remember, hamsters are nocturnal. They sleep during the day and are awake at night. He's going to be really busy tonight when we're trying to sleep. But that's no fun. I really want to play with him now. Maybe he'll wake up a little bit if we take him back inside, Robbie said. The sun is really bright out here. Yes, it is, guys. It is very bright out here. <laughs> I'm starving anyway. Let's go get a snack. We carried, Harry, we carried Harold back inside and went into the kitchen. My mom was there making brownies. I set Harold down on the counter. Oh, what do you think she's going to say about that? She's probably not going to be very happy about them putting Harold on the counter in the kitchen. Hey, Mom, those smell great. Can Robbie and I have some? I asked as I reached for one. My mom grabbed my arm. Hang on there, bud. These are for dessert after dinner. Besides, you can't have anything until you wash your hands. They're filthy. And please get that dirty cage off my clean counter. I put Harold's cage on the floor by the table, and Robbie and I washed our hands. If we can't have any brownies, what can we have? Well, how about some cheese and crackers? That should keep your tummies happy until dinner time. That sounds good to me, Mrs. Thresher, Robbie said. Me too, Mom. Thanks. My mom set a plate of cheese and crackers down on the kitchen table. Robbie and I munched happily. I looked down at Harold. Hey, look, Robbie, I think he's woke up. He's watching us eat. Maybe he's hungry, Robbie suggested. 
Hey, little guy, I said, are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? He looked right at me and smiled. Hey, Robbie, I think he just smiled at me. He just smiled at me. And you thought I was crazy. No, really, he did. Okay, Dr. Doolittle, then let's get him some food. Mom, would you please make a piece of toast for us? A piece of toast? You just had cheese and crackers. You're going to spoil your dinner. No, I said laughing. The toast is for Harold. I think he's hungry. Sure, honey. Why didn't you say so? My mom made a piece of toast and handed it to me. Here you go. I hope Harold likes it. I took the piece of toast, picked up the cage, and started walking out of the room. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going? Up to my room to feed Harold? I don't think so. You know you're not allowed to have food in your room. But it's not for me. It's for Harold. He's going to be eating it in his cage. He won't get any crumbs on the floor. I don't care. A rule's a rule. And I say, no food in your room. You'll have to feed Harold down here in the kitchen. Aw, Mom. Do you want me to take Harold back? No. Well, then you'll do what I say. Harold eats in the kitchen just like the rest of the family. I put Harold's cage on the kitchen table. Freddy, what do you think you're doing? My mom yelled, ugh, feeding Harold. What did she think I was doing? Get that filthy hamster cage off the table where we eat. But I thought you wanted me to feed Harold in the kitchen. I do, but Harold is not a person. People eat at a table. He's an animal. Animals eat on the floor. Please put the cage on the floor. Sure, mom. I set the cage on the floor and started to open the latch. Be very careful, Freddy. Do not open the door too wide and let Harold escape. The last thing I want is that hamster running loose in the kitchen. Don't worry, mom. Robbie's going to help me. He's going to be the guard and make sure Harold stays in the cage. Harold won't get past me, Mrs. Thresher, no matter how quick he is. I have a pet mouse. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate your help. Robbie and I fed Harold little pieces of toast. I think he really liked it because he ate the whole piece. Wow, you must have been hungry, little guy, I said. Now that you're full, maybe you'll want to play. Robbie and I closed the door of the cage. Mom, we're taking Harold upstairs now to play. Let us know when dinner's ready. Okay, honey, just be sure you latch the cage tightly. We don't want him to escape. We will. Don't worry, Mom. He's not going to get away. Hmm. Something tells me with all of the reminders that mom is given and that last line, don't worry, mom, he's not going to get away, makes me feel like those are clues into what's going to happen next, especially since chapter five is called The Great Escape. So I'm actually going to stop this video for right now and I'm gonna read chapter five either inside or at a different place outside because I'm having a really hard time with how bright the sun is. So I will be back with chapter five. Um, it will just be two separate videos. All right guys, see you then, bye.